there! It's the last Friday before the new school year begins and I'm sure some of you students out there are not so happy about this, especially because you're not going to be able to sleep late in the mornings anymore. But don't worry, today's program will help to get you and your parents back in the school spirit. I'm Audrey, stay with us. Six feet a thousand. Six feet a thousand. How much I want? Yeah, man. Two bills I want. No, no, no. Yeah, man. No, man. Yeah, man. Same. 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 You don't know, I sit downtown the other day there. Oh. And all the cobras in them, man, we buy and sell marina. Yeah. One of them I sell a six pack for $1,000, and the next one I sell one for $200. So where you buy? Buy five of them for $1,000. Think them can rob me. So Uncle Fancy, is the same $1,000 you would spend to get the six? Seriously? Tell them again, you my math brains. Math count. Math count. Sponsored by the Ministry of Education. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Friday, August 31. As of Sunday, motorists will not be allowed to enter the three miles intersection from Marcus Garvey Drive in the corporate area. This is among changes that the National Works Agency, NWA, will be implementing as part of its corporate area traffic management plan for the start of school on Monday. NWA's Communication and Customer Services Manager, Stephen Shaw, made the announcement during a press conference on Wednesday. Access to three miles. Access to three miles from the direction of Marcus Garvey Drive will be restricted save and except for local traffic, meaning persons who are going to be doing business either at um, Sam Pars, Dr. Glass and those places in that area. They will not be able to drive from Marcus Garvey Drive onto Hagley Park Road or onto Spanish Stone Road, as is now the case. If heading towards Halfway Tree from Port Moore, motorists will have to travel along Marcus Garvey Drive onto East Avenue, then to Maxfield Avenue and onto Halfway Tree. East Avenue will now operate as a one-way to the north, and Maxfield Avenue will be converted into a one-way going north from Richmond Park Avenue. Chisholm Avenue and Oakland Road will also operate as one-way roads going west from Balmoral Avenue. Motorists will no longer be able to turn left from Balmoral Avenue onto Maxfield Avenue. Additionally, as of September 9, restrictions will be in effect for persons wishing to travel from six miles to downtown Kingston. New traffic signals have been installed to indicate the changes to the road network. Mr. Shaw says the NWA will also be enlisting the help of the police to ensure that persons are able to adapt to these traffic changes. Government has awarded contracts for the supply and distribution of textbooks to primary and secondary school students. Carlong Publishers will provide 1.9 million U.S. dollars worth of books to students in grades 1 to 3. This is part of the state's 2018-2019 primary textbook program. Three companies are contracted to procure and distribute publications under the 2018-2019 National Textbook Loan Scheme for Secondary Level Schools. Kingston Bookshop Limited uh, received the contract totaling $210,517,535.14 Jamaican dollars. Carlin Publishers Caribbean Limited 110 million five hundred ninety three thousand three hundred and eighty seven dollars and sixty five cents book wizard limited sixty five million five hundred and eighty seven thousand two hundred dollars the national solid waste management authority is among a number of state agencies that have received cabinet approval to improve their services a 1.7 million U.S. dollar contract has been awarded to Kingston Industrial Garage for the provision of 12 garbage compactor trucks to the NSWMA. Cabinet has also approved the supply and installation of two new banknote processing machines and bundle packaging systems at the Bank of Jamaica. The contract, worth 1.79 million euros, has been awarded to G&D Mexico. And coming out of this week's post-cabinet media briefing, it was also announced that the Bellevue Hospital in Kingston will have increased security. 
A three-year $126.9 million contract is being awarded to private security firm Modern Investigation and Security Limited. Cabinet has also given approval for the National Water Commission to implement its financial information management system, FIMS. The consulting services valued at $2.84 million US dollars has been awarded to Fujitsu Caribbean Limited. This contract will include provision of the following services. Off-the-shelf FIM software, platform service to host the FIM application, and implementation and advisory services, support and maintenance of four years following implementation and a data migration strategy. The Jamaica Tourist Board, JTB, is developing a new and fully integrated website. The website development is part of the JTB's overall strategy to compete in the changing global marketplace. Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett says the soon-to-be-launched website is consistent with a focus on smart tourism, which targets increased reliance on ICT to market the destination. We have just commissioned and are about to um, install the most important uh, website that the, I believe the Caribbean has seen for tourism. Um, we expect that within another few days, we'll be able to unfold that to Jamaica. JTB's new integrated website will also promote other aspects of Jamaica and provide real-time access and content to tour operators and travel agents globally. And finally, all is set for the unveiling of a statue in honor of Jamaican cultural icon, Miss Lou. The statue will be unveiled on September 7, which is proclaimed as Miss Lou Day. It will be mounted in Gordon Town, St. Andrew, where she lived before moving to Toronto, Canada. Culture Minister Olivia Grange says the installation of the statue is part of Jamaica's plan to establish Miss Lou Square in Gordon Town as a fitting and lasting tribute to the cultural icon. September 7 will mark the 99th anniversary of the birth of Louise Bennett Coverley. The statue paying tribute to her was done by sculptor Basil Watson. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. Respecting yourself, how you carry yourself is very important. You hear me, young men? We take for granted oftentimes as men that people judge you before you even open your mouth. From they look at you, they form a perception. They make up their minds about you. So the question is, when they look at you, what do they see? Understand you might not always agree but you can respect somebody else's view. Respect my life. Respect my dad. Yeah, my respect. It doesn't take anything to be respectful. And you can never tell the impact you will have just by saying, good morning, please, thank you. Respect. Going to school is not all about learning about the different subject areas, such as math or English. It's also about instilling good morals, attitudes, and behavior in our future leaders. Watch now as one school uses its Boys' Day event to groom fine men of tomorrow. Boys are often depicted as rude, rough, and strong, while their female counterparts, the complete opposite. But steps are being taken right here in Jamaica to change that age-old cliché. Watch now as boys from the Independent City Primary School in Portmore are taught fine dining and social graces. The tables were meticulously set. And in no time, all was ready for the special occasion. We're having a fine dining luncheon for our boys today and different speakers will be coming in to address our boys as it relates to fine dining and changing the culture that now exists in our country. The little crudeness and so on, we're trying to ensure that our boys be nicer to our females, to their peers, and by extension, just embracing our co country and the aesthetics that we have here. 
The Boys' Day event, which was held in Portmore Heart Academy Auditorium, employed practical demonstrations and instructions to teach the boys proper dining skills and social graces. The first lesson of the day was to teach them how to properly use their napkins. And you place it in your lap. After the boys mastered this art, they learned how to properly eat their appetizers, which consisted of a warm bowl of soup and a side of roll. You take your roll up and you break off a bite-sized piece. With one finger, one hand, that's what you eat. You put back the rest on your tray and you eat just what you break off. You feel you never bite the roll, okay? And you drink your soup from the side of your spoon. And before long, these boys got the hang of it. Some were so good that they were correcting their pairs. After a sumptuous appetizer, the boys were treated with a mouth-watering main course meal, and boy were they pleased. So what was the reason for hosting such an unforgettable event for the young men in training? It's really about that as much as we spend time with the girls, we want to equally develop the boys because you know, research suggests that the boys move at a little slower pace at this age, so we want to ensure that we give them equal opportunity. I hope that other schools will emulate, will copy to ensure that our boys are exposed. We don't box them in at school every day, but we showcase them and let them realize that they are different places and when you go to different places, you behave different ways. And the effort and hard work of the school did not go unnoticed. We feel like it's the best day, the best boys day, because how they prepare it, how it looks, where it's held. So here are the facts. Seven out of ten Jamaicans die from a non-communicable disease. Because we love our people and we want them to live better quality lives. We, the Ministry of Health and our partners are launching Jamaica Moves. Jamaica Moves is a call to action to prevent non-communicable diseases. By educating and encouraging Jamaicans to be active. Eat healthy. And start living 30 minutes at a time because 30 minutes of physical activity each day, along with proper nutrition, can go a long way. To prevent your risk from developing certain NCDs, such as diabetes, high blood pressure, obesity, and certain cancers. And remember, it's life for promoting. That's why you see me going hard right now. I'm all about living. So help us take this first step towards a healthier Jamaica, so you can enjoy more moments, more memories, more life. For some students, their most exciting subject is physical education. Come on, admit it. You may enjoy PE because you like playing sports, or you may simply love it because it's fun and interactive. But there is also one other important benefit of PE. It's exercise. It's no wonder the ministries of education and health have made physical education an important part of the curriculum and are encouraging other stakeholders, such as churches and communities, to get active. Here's how one church is yielding to government's call. The Yui Mona Bowl came alive with... Ready, Set, Sweat was organized by the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God to promote health and wellness 
heeding the Ministry of Health's call for better nutrition and more active lifestyle. Members of the church and the wider public were invited to take part in the day's offerings. We have a lot of things. We have Sajikor here doing a lot of tests, free of course. We have the Heart Foundation, we're doing the BMIs. Everything is going to be massive today. It's all about movements, getting fit and staying healthy. But not only that, the UCKG organizers of the event partnered with the National Blood Transfusion Service, also known as the Blood Bank, to give back. Scores of persons turned out to give the gift of life, and Eagle Allen, blood donor organizer, couldn't be happier. We at the National Blood Transfusion Service only meet about 50% of the demand. So any opportunity that presents itself that will better help Jamaicans, we welcome it. And we commend them on this for reaching out to us. And we hope that other entities follow suit. Let's not forget the cheerful givers. So is this your first time giving blood and how was it? No, it's not my first time, but it's a pleasure for to help to save lives. Why did you decide to give blood today? Because I wanted to help others that needed it, because there's a lot of people that needed blood. If we just come together and just donate to others, then we can help the better society. <laughs> And if you think aerobics was the only form of exercise for the day, think again. Persons worked out on the bicycle, the treadmill, and check out the strength training, weightlifting, and even juggling football. It's said that Jamaicans are not getting the required amount of physical activity or nutrition in their daily routine to maintain healthy lives. Dion Keynes from the Ministry of Health shared some pointers. Results of the screenings done here today, for example, the weight checks, the blood pressure checks, the blood sugar checks, those can reveal some very important things. And what it can indicate is that Jamaicans actually need to be more physically active. Just moderate exercise of 30 minutes or more per day can actually help to control your blood sugar and help to reduce your blood cholesterol and help you to control your weight better. So it reduces your risk of many diseases like heart disease, hypertension or even some cancers. And I just want to urge persons to get checked, get their screenings done. If you cannot afford to see a private doctor, then use the services of the government health clinic. And what of seeking medical advice via the internet? The internet does offer a lot of information in regards to health issues. However, one has to make sure you do check reputable sites and these information should not be used to make your own diagnosis and administer your own treatment. All persons are encouraged to seek the counsel of their medical doctor on all medical issues. Beyond the various health checks, booths at Ready, Set, Sweat also offered hair care, wellness and fitness services. And for your closing advice... You don't pay attention to the body, which is the temple where your spirit resides. And we have a, a duty to protect it. And we protect the body by paying attention to what you put in your mouth. Because if you don't pay attention to that, you're going to be the richest man in the graveyard by drinking all these acid-forming foods. Now remember, stay fit, keep healthy, and take it one pound at a time. Provided for. And included. Don't beat me up. Don't belittle me. And please don't molest me. I am under 13. I should not be working for a living. That is child labor. It is illegal. 
Stop leaving me alone. I am too young to provide for myself. I need your guidance. Protect our nation's children. They have rights too. To learn more about children's rights, call or visit the offices of the Child Development Agency. Are you a prospective university or college student? Are you nervous about starting this new academic journey? No worries. We have 10 simple tips that should dispel some of the anxieties you may be carrying around on your shoulders. Take out your books and pencils and jot down these notes. Students going off to colleges and universities in the upcoming school year, you're probably excited, scared, or having mixed feelings. You'll be greeted with an entirely new campus, an entirely new set of faces, and an entirely new set of courses. I can guarantee you'll be entering an entirely new world. But don't be dismayed. I've carefully prepared eight useful tips just for you so that your journey through university is as easy as ABC. Tip number one, attend orientation. So you're in, accepted to the tertiary school of your choice. Next step, head to classes, right? Not so fast. Before hitting the books, there is one important step all first-year students should take. It's best for you to orientation. You are given opportunity to go across the campus, to visit the library, to visit the different food areas, to know where your faculty is, where you find the classrooms. So when you come on the first day of school, you will not be lost like I was. One, two, Tip number two, dress simply. Some tertiary institutions, such as teachers' colleges, may ask you to wear uniforms to school, but for most universities, there is no stipulated dress code. That, however, does not mean anything goes. Oh, it's very important to dress simply. Heels would not be a good idea if you need to get from point A to point B and cover large distances. Jewelry, you know, should be, should be simple and to a minimum, because you also don't want to attract you know, thieves to, to your person. And uh, you also want to be cool and comfortable as you, as you walk through the campus. Tip number three, form positive student lecturer relations. When you get to this level, the training wheels come off, so to speak. Lecturers know they don't teach you as, you know, one plus one is two. Sometimes they give it to you as it is and it is your job to go and find out more about the, the given area. That means that knowledge will not be spoon-fed to you and the lecturers won't be spending endless hours ensuring you're getting the most out of your university experience. That's your job. Each lecturer is likely to have office hours where you can have one-on-one -on -one discussion with him or her to clarify any issues you may have about the course. Additionally, some lecturers give students their contact information so they can consult with them outside of the office hours if necessary. Tip number four, study, study, study. At college, it's imperative that you not only study, but study early and avoid overnight cramming before exams. You should always take detailed notes during lectures and tutorials so that you can read them over daily. It's very important to study because um, at the end of the semester you have your end of year exams, which is really important. It might be helpful to form productive study groups with pairs and to find a suitable place on campus away from all the noise and distraction to study alone. Tip number five, eat right. Living the university life can result in all sorts of unhealthy eating habits. Unavoidably tempted to by the many offerings of fast food meals and no adult supervision to keep you on track, your nutrition is solely your responsibility. Try to regularly cook healthy meals and consume as much vegetables and fruits as possible for a balanced diet. Tip number six, practice safety measures. As the school year progresses, you may eventually have late night classes and studying on campus. Uh, ensure you have a friend with you. That's one main thing and ensure that um, persons know where you're going to study 
or when you're coming from class late, stuff like that. So keep a friend um, informed about your whereabouts at night. Tip number seven, manage your time well. Too often we see students get carried away at college. They want to attend every party and social event on campus and even those off campus. Some get so involved in clubs and societies that they don't have enough time to sleep, do laundry, study, visit home, do assignments or even eat properly. The balance is to be found in making sure that you attend classes, review your, your material, the, the academic material, and you set aside some time as well to enjoy those other co-curricular activities that will give you the roundedness that, that we desire in all our students. Tip number eight, know thyself. Finally, going to college means that many of you will be off on your own for the first time, making your own decisions and setting your own agendas. But try to keep in mind the good morals and values that you learned from parents and relatives and remain true to yourself. When you come to university or to college or wherever you go, I would tell them, just be yourself, be who you are. Don't try to change for the world, for anybody. So there you go guys, eight important tips to keep in mind as you go off to college. Follow them and I'm sure they'll make your journey a lot better. All the best. Got to be true to myself. Got to be true to myself. Mommy? Yes, Zoe? Can we read this book? It will only take 10 minutes. Sure, sit down. Every spring, Madame Angel Wing arranges. Do you have 10 minutes? Read with your child today. Reading with your children for just 10 minutes each day helps develop their language and listening skills, stimulates their imagination and expands their understanding of the world. So, start reading with your child today. For those students who have finished high school and are not necessarily off to tertiary institutions yet, we have not forgotten about you. Watch now as State Minister Floyd Green shares how one government agency can assist you in becoming productive and promising men and women of tomorrow. So what we have done with the Heart Trust, we have combined the Heart Trust with the National Youth Service and the Jamaica Foundation for Lifelong Learning. We have merged all of those entities so that the Heart Trust is now a one-stop shop. So even if you have finished secondary school and you haven't moved on to tertiary training, I would say to you now, whether you get through here today or not, go and visit your nearest heart trust. No matter what field of endeavor you're going into, there are some basic subjects that are required. And the heart trust is so organized now to get you those subjects. So even if you go in, let's say you finish secondary school, you never got any subjects. And you said, boy, you can't go to the heart trust because the heart trust is going to do an exam and you're not going to get in. Those, those days are gone. The Heart Trust is accepting everybody. Unfortunately, we've come to the end of today's Youthful Jamaica magazine. But remember, you can re-watch this show on our website, jis.gov.jm. You may also send us a tweet at JIS News or email us at jamaicamagazine at jis.gov.jm. I'm Audrey. All the best for the new school year. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.